People always ask me why I think ZSH is the best shell, and it's actually a really hard question to answer because it's not like ZSH is actually the best shell for most people because it's not. Like, it's not the fastest, it's not the easiest to script in, and even if you do choose to script in it, you're kind of shoehorning your script into only being functional under ZSH because it's not 100% compliant with Bash, which is the most prominent shell out there. So why do I think ZSH is so great? Well, the answer to that question is that it's really easy to customize. Now, those of you who use Bash are going to be shouting at your screen saying, well, Matt, Bash is easy to customize too, and that's true as well, but I never learned to customize Bash. I saw people customizing ZSH first, so when I was learning to do this, I learned how to do it in ZSH. I never learned the Bash way. Now, I should learn how to customize Bash the way I want to use it because Bash, again, is the most prominent shell, but I've kind of decided that I like ZSH a lot, so I've decided just to stick with that. Now, when I say ZSH is easy to customize, it's easy because there are a lot of frameworks and plugins and stuff like that that you can use in order to make it really cool. You can have it adopt functions from other shells like Fish if you wanted to. You can create really cool prompts with it very, very easily. And it's just really simple to make look really nice. Now, it has its own downsides. It is slower than Bash for sure. And the more plugins you add, obviously, the slower it's going to get. So it's definitely not something that is for everyone. With all that being said, if you're interested in using ZSH as your shell, and you want to learn how to customize it the way I have, you could do that the old-fashioned way, of course, and you could watch one of my previous videos where I show you how to get my prompt and everything like that. I'll link that in the video description if you're interested in doing that. But there is a script that is called ZSH for humans. And this thing does everything for you. It's stupidly simple. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the GitHub for ZSH for humans. And as you can tell, it's not the most up-to-date thing that has ever existed. They don't do a lot of updates. It's not abandoned, but it even says right at the beginning, there's not a lot of support a lot of the bugs will go unfixed, so just know that going in, that it's not the most maintained of things in the world. But what it does doesn't really need all that much maintenance. The things that it will do for you is it will enable syntax highlighting, auto suggestions, it will create a command prompt using power level 10,000, it will install FZF if it's not already installed, and create key bindings for FZF which is also really cool. And it doesn't require Git or sudo or anything like that. It actually uses curl. So we're going to install this thing, and I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to do. And then we'll go through some of the features. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, in order to install this, all you have to do is copy this if statement. So we copy this, go to a terminal, which I have one open here. And I will zoom in here like so. And then we'll paste this. Now, in order to paste in a terminal, you can do it either two ways. Control shift V like that. Or you can do the middle, click the middle mouse button, which is the scroll wheel. Hit enter, and it will do this. Now, it's going to immediately drop you into a wizard of sorts. So, you're, it's going to ask you a few questions. So, in this case, it's asking you what kind of keyboard are you using. Are you using a PC or a Mac keyboard? Basically, it's just asking you, do you have an option key? And if you are using a Mac keyboard, you'd choose one. If you're using a PC keyboard, you'd use two. So, I'm going to do two. Now, none of these require you to hit enter afterwards. So, don't think that you have to enter accidentally. So if you hit to enter, it would actually bypass the next question. So just hit the number. So this next question is what key bindings do you prefer? Do you prefer the standard key bindings or are you more interested in using something along the lines of Vi or Vim? Now I'm going to choose one just because that's what most people will probably do. But if you are used to using a Vim or Vi mode in your terminal, you would choose two. So I'm just hit one here. Do you want ZSH to always run in Tmux? Now, I don't use Tmux, so I'm not going to do this one, but if you are a Tmux user, you can make sure that ZSH is always running in Tmux. I'm gonna hit no, which is two, which is N in this case. So the next question is, do you use dir-env? And this is a environment variable or a feature for environment variables. I'm not exactly sure how it works and I don't use it. So I'm going to hit no on this, but if you do use this feature, it's there for you. And then it's going to set up some things, and it's going to ask you another question. Choose installation directory for ZSH. So in this case, you can use one of two directories. 
or you could create your own directory. Now, the first one is going to require a sudo, and that's usually where GSH is installed. And the reason why that's a good thing is because then it would be installed system-wide. So it would be installed for any user that wanted to use GSH. The .local directory is only going to be for you and won't need sudo. I'm going to go ahead and hit 1. It's going to ask me for your pa my password. I'll enter there. And then it's going to do some more installing, and then I'll ask another question. Now, it's going to ask me if I want to set or add ZSH to the list of shells. In this case, I'm going to hit Y, because otherwise none of this would work. And then it's going to ask me if I want to change the login shell to ZSH. In this case, again, I'm going to hit Y for yes. And then I think it's going to, yes, it's going to pop us into the wizard for power level 10,000. Now, here is where we're going to come into a problem, because I started this without checking the dependencies, because I'm a dumbass. And in order for this wizard to actually function properly, you're going to need to have fonts installed. And I don't have the fonts installed for this to work properly, but I'm going to go through it anyways because installing the fonts will take a little while. But just know before you get started on this, have the right fonts installed. So you'll need a nerd font of some kind, and then you'll need to be using that nerd font inside of your terminal. So if you don't have all the nerds fonts installed because you're not a masochist and you don't want to download four gigabytes of fonts, I don't blame you. Just download one of them and use that in your terminal. You can also use any patched font out there if you don't want to use nerd fonts. But you'd have to have some kind of patched font, meaning that it has icon support. I don't have any of those installed, sadly, so this isn't going to look all that great. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead yes here because I can see the diamond. Now this one here is supposed to look like a lock, but as you can see, that doesn't look like a lock because I don't have the, the font installed. So I'm going to hit no here. That doesn't look like a lock either. So also going to hit no there. And then you'll probably, if you have the fonts installed, it's going to ask you another question about the Debian logo. If it does that and it shows the Debian logo, you'd hit yes. It will also ask you probably a question about things overlapping. So just make sure you go through them and just follow the directions. It's really easy. So in this case, it's asking us what we want the prompt to look like. So I'm going to hit three for rainbow and then one for Unicode. This is just telling you, telling it to have those cool arrows, which we call power line in the business. Uh, and then uh, this one here is going to ask if we want to show this current time. And if so, how? So I'm going to hit three for 12 hour because no one wants to do the math for 24 hours. That would be really hard. Math is so difficult. I mean, you only have 10 fingers. How are you supposed to know get up to 24? That's beside the point. Anyways, moving on to the next one. Uh, pr this is asking asking for how you want the prompt to be separated. In this case, we're going to stick with the angled one. So that's number one. And uh, we want it to be sharp. So that's also number one. And then we want the end. So this is talking about the end of the prompt to be flat. So that's also number one. Now, do we want the prompt to be on one line or two? I'm going to go ahead two. Now, it's asking us, do we want it to be disconnected? So in other words, do you want each line to have like a line between them? I'm going to hit one because I don't need the line. And then it asks us if we want to have these little brackets along the side of the lines. And I'm going to go ahead and say number two just for the left. And then the frame color, it's going to ask how dense do you want that line that frame to be and I'm going to have it be number four and then it's going to ask us for the spacing so do you want some padding between the prompts sure number two is fine and then it's asking us if we want the prompt to be concise or not so in this case it's going to be something like this so if you want uh, on master if you have icons this one makes a lot more sense because it actually shows the icons in between the words where it's supposed to for me it's not doing that because again didn't install the fonts so i'm going to hit one here now it's going to ask us do we want to enable transient prompt which just basically means that the previous commands that you have done are listed above the prompt itself it's just the way it kind of works i'm going to go ahead and hit yes here and then that's it. That's all it's done. You might see a couple extra options there for power level 10,000 if you do just, again, read and follow the directions. It's going to really depend on what choices you've made along the way. Now, after this, that's all that there is to ZSH for humans. That's really all there is. But like I said, you'll want to make sure that you've installed the fonts beforehand 
And if you didn't install the fonts beforehand, you can install them now. And you can always rerun the wizard by doing this command here. And that will just run you through the exact same thing we just went through. And if you've just installed the fonts, then you might end up with a couple extra questions, depending on uh, what fonts you've installed. And make sure that you are, that you've, you, once you've installed the font, make sure you're using it as your terminal font, otherwise it doesn't count. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of the features that ZSH for human enables. So one of the things that it does is that it allows you to have auto suggestions. So if I do a couple things, so CD documents and then CD it begin, and you can see here how it suggests documents because we've done that in the history. Basically what this does is it goes back through your history and suggests the thing that is most recent to what is what whatever command you're trying to do. So if I had done pictures before this, if I do CD pictures like so, and then CD up again, now if we do CD again, it'll say pictures, or we can start typing documents and then it will start suggesting documents. Now, let's just say it's none of those things. It's I, I was looking for downloads. I could press tab and it would bring up FZF. So the best way to actually use FZF is to hit control R and what I'm going to actually do before we do this, we're going to CD into template, templates, and CD backup level, CD into public, so that we have some actual history here. So now if we hit Control R, we'll see it's actually showing us the history, and then if we type in, say, templates, and we can see that it narrowed it down to just that entry, we hit enter, and it'll actually give us that command. So if we, let's just say we moved templates to pictures, I mean that's pretty dumb, but you could do that. Hit enter like that. If we then hit Control R and type in templates, we now have two, and you can cycle through those results by hitting the tab. And once you've highlighted the one you want to use, hit enter. It'll give you that command. You can then run that command again if you wanted to do that. So that's FCF. So that is ZSH for humans. There are a few other functions for it. If you want to get into those, you can also see how this functions with SSH. You can see how you can customize it a little bit more. There is not a ton of documentation for this. I'll just warn you right out of the bat. So if you can't find what you're looking for on their documentation, I highly recommend going to the documentation for whatever it is you're looking for. So if you're having problems with, problems with FZF, don't go here for documentation. Go to the FCF GitHub. They have better documentation than this does. Same thing for Power Level 10,000. They have fantastic documentation, so you can go to there. Just do a Google search for that, and it will be better than trying to rely on ZSH for humans for the documentation. So uh, that is it for this video. If you have questions about this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them. I think that this is a really cool way of installing and getting ZSH set up for people who are just complete and utter noobs at this kind of thing. Just run that if statement, follow directions, and it's done. Really, that's all there is to it. And I think that it does provide some functionality that even just like things like oh my ZSH don't actually include because it gives you like that fun that FCF fun functionality and stuff. So that's really cool as well. So like I said, if you have questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast. If you want to follow me on Mastodon, you can do that. The link for that in the, is in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'd like to thank my current patrons, Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, TriDevil, Antoine, Meglin, Jack, Snipe, Steve, Ace, Evergreen, Linux, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TGB, Keith, Andy, Uncle Bonehead, Gary, Ross, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon, Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Eduardo, Art, Sharon, Elliot, Mizlov, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Willie, Peter, Ray, Crucible, Dark, Brandon, Six, Primus, PM, Arlock, One, and Philip. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.